Today we'll be talking about some interesting company fundamentals, uh, primarily book value. Today is January 20, uh, 20th, 2022. Let me start off by saying that I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice, and this information is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. With that, let's get started. Uh, this, this presentation is about asking how much is a company worth? We all know what we pay for a company. We can look up the stock price. Uh, this is a price quote for Meta Materials. As you can see, the price is a buck eighty-nine today. It's down significantly. You can see from the chart that it's down significantly. It uh, dropped below two dollars today. Uh, but if we look at it in the context of the overall market, we see that the overall market is very red today. So uh, the shorts took advantage of the fact that the entire market was down and shorted Meta Materials some more. Uh, that said, uh, if you look at other things like uh, GameStop, you'll see GameStop is also down. So other meme stocks are down. Met Interestingly enough, the Meta Materials Torchlight Preferred shares are not down today. They're about uh, they're they're relatively flat, but being at about a buck thirty six. But uh, even the crypto market is down. Bitcoin is down significantly today. It's down about. Uh, down about 7.8 percent and uh, for the week or the last seven days or so it's down about 9.6 uh, percent so that's uh it's red everywhere it looks like but um there's a famous quote that says that uh, when there's blood in the streets even if it's your own consider buying right buy when there's blood in the streets even if it's your own quotes been attributed to sir nathan rothschild uh, and he was awarded a, a baronship for his uh, financial acumen uh, and uh, there are some there are some reasons for that. All that said, uh, tomorrow I'm expecting massive volatility because it is tomorrow is January twenty first, twenty twenty two. Chances are, when you see this video, it'll probably be tomorrow. But uh, tomorrow is a long term options expiry date. Um, it's an annual options expiry date doesn't happen that often that means that the long that a bunch of long term options are coming due and uh their their prices will be um a lot of people will not want to be paying off their option you know a lot of people don't want their options to pay off tomorrow a lot of people are desperate to make sure that they do a lot of people are de are desperate to make sure they don't so there'll be a large amount of price swings tomorrow that's what i'm guessing at least okay so, all that said, uh, how much is the company worth, right? Well, to really know, uh, you have to know, uh, you know, when you buy a stock, you know, what are you actually getting in a company? That, that you know, that's a that, that's a question that really comes up. What you're getting is partial ownership, right? And then the the question comes up: How much is that company worth, and how much is your partial your partial ownership worth, right? So, let's just take a company, we'll call it Company ABC. It has a bunch of assets, uh, tangible assets and intangibles. Let's focus on the tangibles for now. This tends to be the stuff that you can actually see, things like real estate, um, buildings, land, uh, you know, cash in the bank, inventories, stuff, right? That's, that's the tangible assets. Then you got the liabilities, which are the debts, any, you know, if the company's taking out loans, that's uh, that's a liability. It's a loan to be paid back. Uh, plus, you got to also got payments, things like uh, salaries, right? That's a liability. So, when you take all your assets and subtract all your liabilities, you get what's called stockholders' equity, right? So that's the stuff that's left over. You divide that among all the shareholders, and that's your stockholders' equity. It's also known as book value, and you can find this stockholders' equity usually by just going to the last quarterly report, or the annual report. And uh, in this case, this is Meta Materials uh, last quarterly report. It was a September 30th uh, uh, report. And if we look, we can see that um, the assets are listed. It, oh, this is called the balance sheet, by the way. So if you look in the balance sheet, you can see that the assets are listed. In this case, it's $454 million. Uh, the liabilities were listed. In this case, it's uh, it's ninety four million, and uh, they even list the book value or the stockholders' equity. In this case, 
So uh, I just blew up that last section for you for the stockholders' equity. So if we look at the stockholders' equity, we see that there's $360 million listed. We know that there's about 281 million shares. I just did an approximation here. That means the, the amount of equity per share is about a buck twenty-eight. So basically, everything everything that's left over after you've paid off all your debts, you got about a buck twenty-eight. Okay. Uh, current price is about a buck eighty-nine. It means you're actually paying about sixty-one cents more than the stuff that's left over if you were to break up the company, okay? And that means you're actually paying 61 cents for what the company's doing, right? You know, where the company expects to go forward. Uh, that means total cost of the company at 61 cents per share would be about $170 million, okay? That's a, that's a significant thing to keep in mind. That you're, you're, if you wanted to buy the entire company or the entire worth of what the company is doing, right? That would be $170 million. And what is the company doing for $170 million? Well, let's see. Uh, we know that the price per share is buck eighty nine. We know that, that the uh, the cost actually is about, a, is about 61 cents at this point. And for that 61 cents, you're getting 200 plus patents. Okay. You're getting 200 plus NDAs with partners. Those partners include companies like like Boeing, Airbus, uh, Samsung, right? So you've got huge, huge big name partners there. The products that that sixty one cents per per share or one hundred seventy million dollars um, uh, uh, represents for that company includes things like includes areas in the five G space, including five G antennas and reflectors. These are transparent antennas and reflectors that you can, uh, you know, replace windows with or put on in, in front of windows. Uh, this includes projects in the augmented reality space, having the, you know, the fabled augmented reality eyeglasses, right? Um, so you've, you've got that. Um, you've got products like glucose vibes, which is non-invasive uh, blood sugar monitoring, right? Um, quite a good, uh, quite a good thing to to have in, in your back pocket. Most people don't. There's millions of diabetics out there and they have to prick their fingers every single day to figure out how much their blood sugar levels are. And um, yeah, th this would be a, a massive improvement for them. You got things like laser eye, eye protection for pilots, right? You got uh, major commercial airliners who have pilots and they're getting zapped with laser beams. It's, it's really weird. But uh, if you get but the metamaterials has eye protection for that. They've got uh, you know sunglasses that will reflect laser beams. Pretty cool. So all of that for sixty-one cents or one hundred and seventy million dollars. I think that's worth more than not than one hundred and seventy million, or it's worth more than sixty-one cents. I think I don't know. Who's to say? But you know, I didn't even take into account the nanotech purchase that they had recently, and the and that wasn't in their. Uh, their last quarterly report. It'll be in the next quarterly report. But they recently bought a company called Nanotech, which basically um, it basically secures um, printed money. Secu it secures paper money. They have deals with various central banks, in which case their technology will be embedded into paper money to to keep to prevent counterfeiting. It's anti-counterfeiting technology. It's pretty cool. So the shorts in metamaterials, they'd like you to believe that all the all that stuff, you know, all the two hundred plus patents, all of that stuff, is worth it. Is worth zero, right? I don't believe it's worth zero. I think it could be worth something. So question comes up: What could it be worth? <laughs> uh, anyway, let's get back to book value. Okay, so if we look at uh, book value, there's a ratio called price to book value, right? That takes basically the entire market capitalization, which is the uh, the cost of uh, the, you know the cost to buy all the shares at the current price, right? If you could get all the shares at the current price, that's the market capitalization. And uh, and then there's the book value, which we just described. So uh, in the case of metamaterials, we know that the current that the uh, price of metamaterials is a buck eighty nine. We know that the book value per share is a buck twenty eight. That means that your price to book value for metamaterials is one point four eight, almost about one and a half. Okay. 
If your price to book is less than one, that means that the company's assets are worth more than um, they're worth more than the market capitalization of the company. Right? It's a dangerous place to be at less than one. It means it's it can be worth it for someone to take over your company and basically split it up and just sell all the assets, get rid of the debt, sell all the assets, and they can they might make some money. Who knows? When you're pro but in general, the price to book for meta materials is 1.48, so it's greater than one. That means that the company is worth more than all the physical assets, and of course, it should be worth more than all the physical assets, right? That's that's what you expect. So let's look at the tech sector and let's see what the various price to book values we can see in various companies are. Okay, Intel we see has a price to book of 2.28. It's very low. Uh, primarily, that's because um, Apple came out with their with their new set of processors called the M1 processors, and uh, they're doing quite well. And that shows the capabilities of of having your own processors. Even still, Intel's price to book value is 2.28. It's fairly low. It's the lowest of the bunch, but it's, it's still it's still not bad, right? Uh, their competitor, uh, Applied Micro Devices (AMD), has a price to book of 23. Okay. NVIDIA has a price to book of 31. Apple Computer has a price to book of 46. As we can see, you know, these companies have relatively high price to book values. If we look at a has-been company like IBM, uh, I like to call IBM, I've been mugged. In actuality, it stands for International Business Machines. They, they, they used to make PCs. Um, I don't know what they do now. Anyway, their price to book value is 5. <laughs> If we look at a company like Google, um, their price to book value is uh, 8, essentially. Facebook is about 6.9 or so, 6.88, right? Netflix has a price to book of 17. Um, so uh, Cisco Systems, they make networking equipment. They Their price to book is about 5.85. All of these are are, are considered high-tech companies, so I put them in the, in the tech sector, right? There are also some companies that you may or may not heard of, like Cadence Design and Synopsys. Um, they make um, they make software that's used to help design the next generation of tech, basically. And uh, their price to books are in the range of uh, all, uh, about nineteen and ten, right? So, if you take a bunch of these companies and just you know average out their price to book value, you can see that uh, you know sixteen point two is not. It's not unreasonable to have a price to book value of 16, right? But uh, Meta Materials has a price to book value of 1.5, about. So I think that makes it an excellent value in comparison to the rest of these companies in the tech sector. In the tech sector, it's hard to find a, a company with that, you know, with that low of a price to book, and uh, and that type in that bright of a future. So that's it. How much? We talked about the projects that they that they were involved in before. How much revenue can these projects generate? We know that the 5G antennas and reflectors has been uh, has been reputed to be about a five billion dollar opportunity opportunity by Ken Rice. So it's about five billion dollars or so. Uh, I'm not sure how much augmented reality is worth. Let's say that's worth about five billion as well too, because. It's it's where the future is, where people want to go, right? The next gen, you know, computers are great, but augmented reality will make computers even better. Glucose-wise, I don't know how big that market is. So let's say it's five billion dollars. Could be, who knows? Might be more, might be less. Laser eye protection. Uh, that's probably a smaller market because it's protecting pilots, saving lives. Generally, winds up not having a very high. Um, uh, high valuation, unfortunately. Uh, I, I personally would like to see it worth more. Uh, nanotech, again, we don't know how much that's worth. Uh, let's say it's worth a billion or so. In either case, we're looking at um, you know we're looking at large large revenues, right? So let's just take one of them. Let's just take five uh, G space, right? And if we look at that, we've got about five thousand, you know, five billion dollars in revenue coming in potentially, and uh, across two hundred eighty-one. 1 million shares, uh, that works out to about uh, $17.80 per share almost, right? Seventeen seventy-nine. In revenue, in, in revenue, that's not necessarily in profits, right? So let's say that your profit margin is, is a 25% profit margin in that whole area, right? Pretty, you know, not that high of a profit margin. And uh, that means that you could potentially be getting $4.45 profit, 
With a P.E. ratio of about 20, which is not an unreasonable P.E. ratio, that means your projected share price would be about $88.97. About $89, almost $90, with a profit margin of 25%. Right? Uh, that also means if, uh, if, if you had a 50% profit margin, <laughs> you're looking at, uh, what, $8.90 in profit per share. A P.E. ratio of 20, which is not an unreasonable P.E. ratio, means that implies a share price in the range of 170 plus. In this case, 177.94. So, uh, so what does that all mean? That means that I can, that I can do a quick uh, calculation. I can look at the downside versus upside, right? So, on the possible downside, let's say that the shorts were right, and uh, and all of that uh, all of that technology I described is worth zero. If that's the case, you lose sixty one cents a share. <laughs> that's your downside, sixty one cents a share, right? That means that all of the stuff that we talked about, the five G, all that stuff, it's worth zero. Do I think it's worth zero? No. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> very unlikely, but that's possible downside, right? It's very unlikely, but that's the possible downside. What's possible upside, right? I just did a calculation right there, right? I showed you it was 88.97. Uh, that's if just one of the projects or that just one of those technologies work out, right? It can be anywhere from 88.97 uh, all the way up to $177. <laughs> that's just one. If five of them work out, if all five work out, geez, I can't even imagine what that valuation would be. So, uh, so that's where that comes from. So, I don't know. I think the upside is better than the downside. That being said, price looks low. I'll probably wind up buying some tomorrow. <laughs> uh, well, it, it'll, it'll be volatile today. I might buy some Monday. But if it drops down significantly... Tomorrow I might buy some more. I can't say what I'm doing. I, 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 I have no clue. But if it does drop down significantly, I'll be, you can tell I'll be looking. <laughs> anyway, that's, uh, th that's, that's what I'm thinking today. Just want to let you know that uh, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This information is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. So, goodbye.